back again with another True to the Game video. This is going to be a partial video response to Bland Humanoids Lone Warriors. Now, I think that that's definitely a good topic to discuss. Uh, overall, really what I'm going to be talking about though is game hogging. It's a video I've been wanting to do for a while, just watching uh, Rob's video and and thought it might be an appropriate time to put that out there. also like the idea of responding to people's videos. I think that helps us build more community here. So anyone that would like to respond to this or any of my other videos, please feel free. I just check them before I'm watching them. So, you know, feel free to do that or, or to comment as, as you will. Now, spotlight hogging can be a real problem. And it seems to occur more and more the more players you have in a game. Now, don't get me wrong. If you have too many players in a game, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to fight for your spot. Uh, it usually, if it's one more player than the game master can handle for that game, that's really when it, it seems to be very common that this occurs. Because you want to show up to have a good time. Now, hopefully everyone can have a good time together. I've been in games where that was absolutely not possible. There were problems amongst the players, ego issues, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I'm definitely going to get mines. I'm going to you know, be very upfront about that. I have all kinds of tricks and tips to making sure that I'm going to get my spotlight time and get my play in, even if I don't know a single other person at that table. However, when I do that, I try not to uh, just rebuff the other players. I'll typically try to grab one or two or all of them and bring them along with, with that, what we're doing for the spotlight, because I think it that's going to feed the game master more. It's going to have more energy. That's going to start building the confidence of those other players up to make them not feel that they have to go... I have to have it, I have to have it, because they've had they've been scorned, a man scorned, if you will, maybe, by a bad GM who who or a GM that's made a bad call on their behalf or at least to their mindset. And they they do not want to be pushed to the backside or to be shunned. They want to make sure that they get their fun. Have their fun. That's what we talk about that in my gaming group, your fun. And that's really a measure of a game. How much you enjoy in any particular game session. And you have to make sure that you you know you're able to do that, but you don't want to be the sort of person that's running off all the time on your own. And that's really what Rob's talking about a lot in his video. Now I had that in, not in the last Forgotten Realms game around, but but in the first one, the game before that. Uh, but it wasn't one player was well, well one player would do it a lot. Kevin Cuff, and I'm trying to watch this. He unfortunately in a lot of ways was was the best player in the group too. Uh, so what he would do, you know, I'd be, be kind of feeding the game master, you know, and he'd be doing a lot of entertaining, interesting things. And the other players would kind of bitch and whine, and I would encourage them to role play amongst themselves and with each other, try to give them a spot. And I would try to give other people, you know, one-on-one -on -one stuff too. And I think in a game, I think you touch on that too, Rob, that you have to have that back and forth player game master. You got to make sure that you uh, are engaging them so that they are more than just uh, standard door opening procedure. That's trash. You don't want to be involved with that. You want to be involved with something dynamic that's popping that that you can sink your uh, mind into and, and believe is real for if only those quintessential few moments when the game is at its zenith. Now that <coughs> is something that sometimes can only really be achieved through that one-on-one -on -one play with the game master and sometimes everyone is going to have to hold up. Sometimes you need to maintain your secrets and secrecy in the game. So a game master definitely needs to be willing to give players a one-on-one -on -one time during the game. You want to make sure that you give everybody some. I'm not be really a big uh, spread the wealth sort of person. You play to your best players, play to your strongest players, play to the players that entertain you the most. You're going to not end up being game master burnout. But try to give, if you're given, you know, on a, on a, a hundred point scale, given 50 to one person, try to give the, the, you know, the person at the end of the scale at least 10. You know, try to give them something. Try to throw them something back. Or try to throw something out there and if they only do a little bit with it, well that's on them. It's really as a game master just on you to try to try to throw them out something. Uh, how they run with how they run with it. You know, you, if you're the quarterback, you throw the pass. It's really really up to to your receiver to how well and how far they can run with that. There's not much you can do with it after that. And you got to make sure that you're continuing to have fun as a game master. You always have to make sure that you yourself are having fun. Get your fun too, and that's going to really prevent you from having game master burnout because nothing to burn out from if you're you know if it's popping off for you, you're having a great time. Now. The specific example that I'm talking about in this game, that uh, it wasn't just one player. It was the, uh, the the wolf pack, I guess you might say. And Big Kev and the moon, Steve, would, would run off and they would just in character all the time. Boom, 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 back and forth. And I love that. I love people getting into that deep 
uh, upset with each other. And I would, the other players would kind of sit around and bitch, oh, well, they're they're doing too much, they're holding up the game. Sometimes, every once in a while, I'm very, very reticent to ever break up role-playing. I don't like to do that. I like to just allow people to role-play as long as they want, and then I'll advance the story along. Uh, but I like to make sure people, particularly if they're really enjoying themselves, but when you have two people really enjoying themselves, and it's kind of holding up, other people say, okay, you know, I give them, like, hints. So, well, grab one of the other people, bring them in, you know, so let's have a bit more dynamic. And... I would tell the other people sitting there, man, you guys get a role-playing partner, too. They're all doing that. You you guys uh, initiate and, and start building up uh, role-playing for yourself, you know. And I think that what I do in a game like that is to one of the persons off with the Game Master. The Game Master will come back to the table and go, wow, thank you for still role-playing, guys. I really appreciate that. Guys, I'm sorry I was gone for 25 minutes. And I said, baby, you know I'm going to be in this game, and I'm going to keep, keep my role-playing going. And I, I like to do that. I like to make sure that I am always immersed and engaged. And if the Game Master isn't going to provide me that stimulus, I will damn sure force one of the other people at the table to role play with me. And even if we say, oh, well, that part in time was frozen, I say, well, let's back up to camp last night and let's keep role playing off there. And let's get deeper in our characters. Let's get something. We want to, every second you're at the table, try to do your best. Don't sit there and text or play solitaire on your computer. Those things are trash. You can do that on your own time at any time. But when you're there at the table, make sure you do as much as you can. And that can kind of help to prevent the tension the game master feeling they might be really feeling like I, I have to get back to the to the group and, and kind of push this scene off but it might be a really quintessential scene for your game in terms of how the amount of importance is for that so i think that it definitely has to be a balance there you can't have players running off all the time with the game master to the point that there's barely any sort of semblance of game and i think one players that like to go off man try to go off and grab somebody else sometimes too I might tell gamers, no, I don't need you. I need this player here outside right now. And, and we're going to do what we need. Of course, gamers might float, float, and I want to uh, take a look. But I say, you know, go handle your business inside. Keep them entertained. I'll handle this. I'll, I'll give you the bullet points. And sometimes they like to come out there because they want to see that that role playing that's cracking off. But with the with that, you really can do a lot in terms of being proactive. If you are a proactive player, you can make a game master job so much easier, particularly if you are not only attempting to motivate to get your spotlight time, but use your spotlight time and help highlight another player or facilitate spotlight time for another player. And there's lots of ways that you could do that too in, in terms of bringing them along and coming up with reasons that are plausible for your character. Make a character, first of all, when you create a character, make a character that has plausible reasons down the line you can develop for interacting with other characters. Voids, perhaps the character needs filled emotionally or psychologically that allow him to have that... Uh, serious connection to another human being so that you can have that genuine idea. You don't want it to come off to, I'm a player, you're a player, let's play together. That is very, very basic and very rudimentary. It comes off very much like a video game. So you really got to stay away from that. You want to have reasons, and reasons come together in character creation. Thinking of how and why this is going to be a person that isn't an adventuring party or in you know, a coterie or what have you, whatever the game mechanic is for keeping the characters together. Consider that and consider how you're going to... Uh, be involved in that sessions down the line and when you have that that spotlight time sometimes you do need to go one-on-one -on -one, but make sure when you can that you bring other people in particularly the shyer players the, the less reserved players try to grab them try to build them up try and try to make more out of them you know the other people at the table can can be great uh you know can, can come across as greatly useful to you if, if you figure out what sort of strengths they have and try to cater those as a player. And you can help produce a lot of scenes right there for yourself and the Game Master will be very happy that you're taking that amount of work off them. The One of the biggest problems I continuously see is Game Masters thinking they have to do all the work of players sitting back and just sponging off them like leeches. As a, as a player, you can almost be sort of a co-game master yourself if you start producing scenes, if you start doing things you think about beforehand to actively involve other players and stuff, if you start coming up with your own little conspiracy or co-plots on the side, and you know you start doing different stuff one-on-one -on -one with other players, getting their characters involved, um, you know, and that can really help fill in some of that dead time you might have if you're going to run in a game where there is some of that one-on-one -on -one play. But like uh, the Noid says, don't be that, that D-bag that just runs off and just wants to make the game all about you and not make it any fun for anyone else that just refuses to play with other characters. Don't make a character like that. Um, make sure you have some kind of way to react to and deal with the other players. It might be a slow build. You might not be falling in love with the characters within the first 10 minutes that your character meets them, that's fine. But you need to have a way down the line where your character is going to be able to become uh, in union with these other people to some degree and not have that poor experience of, 
I am simply here for myself. You're going to make yourself very unwelcome at the table. It's showing very poor etiquette. It puts more stress on the game master. This is the sort of thing that can splinter, break a game, this kind of thing. It can make the other people in that game, some of them might themselves be game masters you like to play with, and they're not, they're not necessarily going to want to invite you if you've already ruined a game for them. They're going to go, this guy's a dick, and you're going to get a bad reputation. When you have a bad reputation, you're going to have it very hard to find more games to play in, and thus you're going to have less fun with the hobby. So basically my advice here is don't be a dick. Try to interact as much as possible with the other players. Try to make the game uh, scintillating and exciting for everyone at the table. And you're going to benefit from that, and your game master is going to thank you.